How many of you are from out of town? Yeah. All right, a lot of travelers coming in, huh? Well, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, uh, you guys for coming out. I want to thank the Detroit House of Comedy and, of course, C4 Ultimate Energy for bringing us Not Sam Wrestling here to Detroit. Have you guys tried these new flavors? C4 and WWE, they teamed up, and, they, and they've got Ruthless Raspberry, Berry Powerbomb, and there was a, there was a quote that uh, I wanted to mention. Uh, Montez Ford said it. We know Montez Ford, right? You like Montez Ford? Well, we don't know. I mean, he joined up with Bobby Lashley. We don't know. I mean, we have used to like Montez Ford, but Montez Ford said that C4 and WWE go together like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, it's available at GNC, and I love this, like, WWE-branded stuff with the Then, Now, Forever and the big logo on it. It always takes me back to, like, uh, WWE ice cream bars. You know what I mean? Like, did we all grow up on WWE ice cream bars? Yes. Where's Hot Dog? Hot Dog. How you doing, buddy? Hey, one time for Hot Dog, huh? Come up on the stage, Hot Dog. They want to see your face. They Come on up, Hot Dog. They want to see your face. Hot, yeah, there he is. Look. It's hot dog. What are they chanting? Lizzie? What? Lizzie? Lizzie? I don't know. You could, there's a microphone. Is that Glizzy? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Hot, well. Oh, Glizzy. Yeah. Like a hot dog. Yeah. Um, yeah, Glizzy. No, Glizzy. Glizzy. No, no, Glizzy. I don't, I don't like that one. Yes. Really. Yes. We have. We have a guest? We have a guest. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Well. Give it up for Hot Dog. What a great segment, huh? Give it up for Hot Dog. Glizzy, glizzy, glizzy. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest, uh, I feel like, is uh, one of these superstars that, and this is something that I think NXT has brought us in a big way. Uh, you kind of end up going on a journey with these superstars so that, like, you know, as, as accomplishments happen, you really feel that same payoff. Like, you see the potential and everything. You see it grow. You see it take this turn, that turn. Uh, and I feel like we're on the journey with our next guest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Riddick Moss. Up, How are you? <laughs> Have a seat wherever you want. Help yourself to a C4. You get a Barry Power Bomb. You can get a Ruthless Raspberry. Whatever you want, dude. The world is your oyster. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's cool. How's yeah. everybody doing? <laughs> I was just saying, uh, I didn't know that the gimmick attorney was going to be here, but I actually just reached out to him the other day for a non-gimmick issue, but just a, <laughs> oh, a, does he a do legal, a, a legal issue just to yeah. get his opinion on it. And thankfully, we were able to settle it, so I didn't need to... <laughs> utilize his services just yet, but sure, it was nice sure. to meet him in person. Uh, Riddick, I think uh, I, along with a lot of people, have been wondering for a long time, uh, did you, was it your choice to wrestle in suspenders? <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, all right. Go ahead. Yeah, grow, <laughs> growing up, um, you know, I always... Uh, yeah, dreamed of wrestling in suspenders. So, <laughs> you know, that was my first pitch when I got to the WWE. No, it wasn't. It wasn't my um, wasn't my idea. Um, the general idea for the character was told to me. It, it all happened really quick. I was coming back off of injury, and I had done one dark match at a SmackDown. They kind of had just like my first match back, and then I thought I was going to do that um, a week or two later, and it turned out no, you're going to be on TV tonight and you're going to be with Corbin. And I thought, okay, cool. I mean, he's doing this thing where he's like kind of, you know, he's very wealthy now. He's happy Corbin. And happy Corbin. Maybe I need to <laughs> – I had just kind of brought something like, like I'm wearing now, like jeans and a shirt. So I actually got into Philadelphia. My brother was living there at the time, so I went and raided his closet and got the nicest clothes I could from him. So I just had something to wear that night, but it turned out I was just dressing like a cameraman hiding and attacking Kevin Owens, so I didn't need it that week. Um, but you were ready. I, mean, I was ready. I don't think people even like take into account, right? Because WWE is such a huge machine that as yeah. a superstar, you're like, look, this has just come up, but who knows what I'm going to be doing. Let me just be prepared for all exactly. possible outcomes. Yep. Yeah. Um, so they gave me the, the idea of the character and said, we need to come up with the name and the look still. 
and we'll let you know. And a week went by and we, I didn't hear, have anything definitive until I was on the plane ride over to the next show and I had Wi-Fi and texting abilities. And so I got a text from one of the uh, writers who said, your name is going to be Madcap Moss from now on. I thought, okay, here we go. Madcap, <laughs> good start. Um, and a couple minutes later, he said, and this is the idea for your new look. But on the plane, you can't download pictures. So I had the whole flight <laughs> wondering, like, what is my new look going to be? And sure enough, when I, when I landed and could download it, I had the suspenders on it. I thought, you know what? This is fun. Here we Let's go. Let's do it, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, you also know, too, like, because if it was just like, we're just going to put you in a pair of tights, there'd be no picture. Right. So you yeah, know when the exactly, picture's not yeah. loading, there's like, this there's is going to be something, yeah. There's going to be something there. Yeah, I think that's what, so we talked the first time uh, way back in the NXT yeah. days when Robert Stone yeah, yeah. was there. Like, people don't know, you guys know Robert Stone, NXT, oh, yeah. Robbie yeah. E, and everything. Really? A, a round of applause, <laughs> huh? Yeah. I don't think you guys realize, it. I'm sure you found out that, like, Robert Stone as, like, a, a wrestling manager on screen, like, he absolutely brings those duties way off screen. Like, like when that interview happened, he literally, Robert Stone texted me, per, and he's like, hey, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Riddick Moss now, and, and we got to do this interview. And I've always loved it. Like, <laughs> he's like, no, I'm your, I'm your manager. Yeah. So I'm going to get you this opportunity, that opportunity. Yeah. Um, were you, did you grow up a wrestling fan? I did, yes. Uh, my, I have two brothers, older brother, younger brother, and we were super into football, but we were also super into wrestling, like Monday Night Wars era. We were more WCW fans I, for whatever reason. Um, were and, you guys, what, what's, the, what's the room like? Yeah. WCW? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> WWE? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And a lot of people who chose to remain yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are not willing anonymous. to say. Anonymous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we were, we were pretty hardcore into it. I mean, we had we, – we watched every Monday, and we, we had a bunch of action figures, that, and then we created our own wrestling federation with those guys. We called it uh, Wrestling Guys. We weren't extremely creative at the time. <laughs> That was the name so, of the promotion? Yeah, the promotion. We, WG, you know, we shortened it, <laughs> Wrestling Guys. And uh, we had, you know, we had drawings, too, with the maneuvers, the finishing maneuvers uh, drawn out. With They weren't well drawn out, but, you know, we, you had the idea. And then, you know, of course, they often mirrored current superstars. You know, there was sure. a guy who was very similar to Goldberg, for example. <laughs> there was, it, put it this way, there was one main event superstar whose name was Rock Edge. Okay, so <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't strain ourselves too much. Who was the first wrestling guy's champion? Oof, I don't remember, um, but it was, uh, we had a lot of great main event matches. We also didn't have a hell in a cell, but what we did have is heck on a deck. <laughs> so it was, the ring was elevated on, the way the dimensions worked out, it was probably a 50 foot table and guys, I mean, they went off of it. It was, it was scary for sure, but they survived somehow. And, uh, you know, the promotion lived on. I just realized that's because you were a WCW fan. Yeah. You just took all the WWE ideas sure. and kind of yeah. sort of yeah, tweaked yeah. them and made them slightly worse and like, <laughs> yeah. and did them that way. <laughs> so like, so, and then you played foot when you were playing football was, was wrestling something that you knew is like, this is a possibility. Was it a goal? Was it not on your radar at all? I would, I would say it wasn't on my radar and it was because like how you become a professional football player is like very simply laid out. Like you just play in school through college and then the NFL drafts you and you go pro like, and you know, like as a kid, you know, the college football players and the, as a, as to know, like where Scott Hall came from, it just like, wasn't as easy to fi find or know, like it wasn't as laid out for me. Totally. And, uh, and I got in, in college, I had gotten busy with class and taking football very seriously. And so I had kind of fallen out of touch with it. Like my last couple years of high school into college. And then when I got done with college, all I was doing was training for like pro day, which is like the NFL combine, but just for each individual college. And I just had a lot of free time on my hands. And so I was like, yeah, let me get back into WWE. And my older brother, I credit him with, like, he, he had remained a fan throughout. And so he kind of drew me back in. And, like, I got super into it again. And we created the locker room wrestling league at my school. And <laughs> we, You're a creative guy. We had a lot of we, – we had one match. 
And out of that match, we set up. We had like a ref turn, you know, like a ref turn, a heel turn, a masked man that was secret, that was a coach. Actually, we had all these things, and we didn't go past the one match. The, the federation went out of business when I left, but um, yeah, we had some fun. That's awesome. Uh, so when you get to NXT, right? Like the reason I brought up Robert Stone is because I don't know. I just feel like the way he thinks is like so wrestling. You know yeah. how how in tune to the wrestling culture were you? Because it's one thing to grow up a fan and watch it on TV and you're doing like, you know, you're, you're doing wrestling guys and you're doing locker room wrestling. But when you like get into the world, yeah. it's a different thing, right? It is a different thing. And it's, it's a bit different than what I came from, which was football, which was just a bit more um, linear and clear. Like there's kind of just rules to how you do things and like what makes a good football player, just the fundamentals and playing within the scheme and making plays. If I was a linebacker, if I tackled the ball carrier, that was good. Um, and it's just a lot uh, different in wrestling. Just you can become a good wrestler, a good superstar in so many different ways. And sometimes you just got to kind of take it on yourself to go do those things. And some, a lot of times what Rob is really good at is – the promotion part of it, which is, and I mean, that's kind of a slight at him, but not really. I mean, you do <laughs> need to do that stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, he set up the interview with us at the time. He set up a TMZ interview where right. I, I was, I had torn my Achilles and I, I did have a really good recovery with it. I came back in five months and Kevin Durant had just torn his. So that was like a big story in the mainstream media. And I, I, I got a TMZ article about how I was going to help Kevin Durant. All he had to do was reach out to me, and, you know, <laughs> he was going to be back in five months. Um, so he wrestling. Didn't. That's so I, I, you know, I actually thought there was a chance, too, because, like, if anyone knows Kevin Durant, he's very active on social media with, like, nobodies. Like, you know, pe <laughs> people who are clearly, you know, just trolling him and stuff. Yeah. So, like, I thought, well, maybe there's a – chance this <laughs> random pro wrestler guy like i'll respond to him and call him an idiot or something but he didn't bite that's too bad <laughs> well, is that a scary thing when you tear your achilles before you've even had an opportunity to kind of you know lay that foundation yeah. for what you're going to do in wwe is it is it worrisome when it happens or is it like you're a professional athlete like it this sucks but i'm just gonna go train get it better and this is just what happens yeah, a bit of both. I mean, for me, when it first happened, it was like 10 minutes of like, what the hell just happened? I can't believe, like, I was just training. How did it happen? I was training, yeah. and it was, I was probably just doing too much. Like, it was coming off of WrestleMania weekend, and then also an NXT TV taping, which was a late night, and then I was in the next morning training, and I was just doing too much. It was like an explosive movement thing where I was doing a broad jump into a sprint, and if anyone's ever torn their Achilles or heard about it, it feels like someone hit you in the back of the leg. Ah. And so I thought someone threw something at, in my way as I went, who threw the med ball at my leg? I was about to cuss somebody out. And then I, there was no one around me. So I just went, no, that was my Achilles. <laughs> but, um, you know, I actually, there was times where I, because the Achilles, I, it's gotten a lot better, but you hear these stats about guys not being able to get back to their, their old form. And so there is a bit of worry in that, but, I think it was about 10, 20 minutes in. I was, like, plotting out my recovery, and I thought, like, if I can, you know, the, today is the in April, and if I can be back by this point, and if, you know, we can start doing stuff before I'm even back. And I was kind of planning it out, and it actually, I think, was a really good – it was a blessing in disguise because there are times in wrestling and anything in life where you can just kind of get too down in the weeds – and get frustrated over the little things. And sometimes you need something to give you some perspective. And stepping back out of the, the, the weeds, the everyday of being in wrestling, but also giving me something to just focus all my attention towards and not worry about, you know, what this guy over here does doesn't affect my Achilles. So I just, like, could focus on my thing and then kind of also gain some perspective. And I came back in a better mindset, and I think I actually – just being out of it, but watching and trying to learn, uh, came back a better performer. So you come to the main roster, Madcap Moss is formed. How are you like, cause you hear like the John Cena story, right? He's rapping in the back of a bus. They hear him rapping. They turn him into a hip hop artist. There's like all these different stories that wrestlers have told where it's like, you gotta be really careful who you do what in front of. Cause they'll turn it into your thing. Like Paul Barrow is an actual funeral director. Like a, 
were you like a guy who cracked a lot of like dad jokes or so or was I'm it not I'm <laughs> not I'm not a, a fan of the pun dad jokes but a lot of people by the way that's the clickbait of this whole interview <laughs> yeah Moss hates puns <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah no I will I would say I don't think there was anything I did I think this was an idea that they had that they just thought that maybe I could pull off and I will say that although I don't I'm not a huge into puns I there is a very similar characteristic between my real self and Matt, the madcap character, which is like, I love to just have a good time and laugh and not take anything too seriously. Yeah. At the end of the day, as much as we care about all these things, like it's just wrestling. And, you know, I just, I like to have fun and that, that applies not just to wrestling to like anything in life. Like I just want to have fun and I'm always, if there's ever an angle for me to get the laugh, I go for it. Like, there's no doubt. I'm, unless it's a really inappropriate situation. But even then, I think about it. You know. Yeah. How can I? Can I? Yeah. Can I? <laughs> can I get away with this right now? <laughs> um, so I think that there was maybe that aspect to it. Maybe I think that it kind of just lined up, and it was a bit lucky. Um, but I did have to show, demonstrate to Vince that I could laugh. So he, he explained <laughs> the character, explained what he was looking for out of the character, and then said. Okay, laugh. I said, excuse, excuse me? I said, laugh. <laughs> All right, that works. We can, you know what it is? We can work you know, give that. him a round of applause. I know you want to give him a... You just saw a madcap moss laugh just like that. I think it's the rev up. I think yeah. that's what it is. It's like it starts low. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it goes. yeah. I also love it, you know, and, and it's smart. That's why the guy's a genius. That's why he's a billionaire because he knows... Well, we can get a writer to write you jokes. Yeah. We can do all this stuff, but the laugh, right. that's where you're going to have to supply it. Yeah. And you nailed it. Um, I think that the, the thing that I find fascinating about the Mad Cat character and about other characters like that and the way they're performed is it does kind of become up to the performer. There are plenty of characters like that where the person who's portraying it is just not into it yeah. and like you can see it. And then there's... There's just, I, I feel like Madcap is one of those examples where people were like, what is this? But you were so committed to being that, and you didn't blink, that Riddick was gone. Like, no, you see me, and I'm Madcap. I'm on TV, and I'm Madcap. And the audience is left with no choice but to go like, no, dude, that's Madcap. Yeah. Is that, is that, was that intentional? Are you going like, I gotta, I gotta go 100%? Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. And yes, and, and other people have mentioned that to me as well. Like I didn't, yeah, I absolutely didn't uh, question whether or not this was, you know, the best thing for me to reach the main event to WrestleMania. I just dove headfirst in. And I remember Kane came to the Performance Center years ago and told us that, you know, he did that with his, you know, dentist gimmick. And he dove, <sighs> he, he said, I just went in and said, I'm going to make this the best I can. And he thought that it played a role in him when the Kane character came along. They said, Glenn Jacobs can do it. And so that, that stuck with me, and, and other people have told us the opposite story, that they regret not diving you know, head first into that character and giving it everything they have. And I think that um, you know, more than anything, that's what I'm looking to do is just be – you know, something like that that I can really dive into and give everything I have to it. And if the, the people, hopefully they like it or hate it if they're supposed to. And I think um, I think it worked out pretty well with the Madcap character. I do too. And, like, I feel like people take for granted, like, this thing of, like, you're just a dude who all of a sudden has to make these terrible jokes yeah. in front of 15,000 people. Like, it's not like we were watching on TV and we're like, yeah, this is just what superstars do. But it's like you're also a human being. Yeah who's like, no, I got to go 100%, and I have to do it in front of arenas and sometimes stadiums yeah. full of people. Was there, ever, was there ever a moment where you were like, this one's going to be tough? You know, it, it wasn't. And um, it's funny you say that because I have thought that it would be tough with other characters um, to, to possibly be able to pull that stuff off. But, you know, one thing about this was, like, I could have a ton of fun with it. Like, yes. it, it just... And Adam Pierce and I, who's he's a he's an old wrestler and, and now producer, and it was a coach at the Performance Center, and he's helped me a lot tremendously throughout my career at the Performance Center, and now currently on the main roster. Um, we had this, you know, I love doing this Robert Robert De Niro impression. Where, mm, mm. 
<laughs> I don't say anything with it, but and uh, and so you know that was like a big thing for us. And you know he would he would have me do it in a match. You know, like you better you better look at the camera and give me that De Niro face. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Which which and by the way, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's one of those moments where it's like I guarantee you, it's happening. What about? Riddick De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful what you Gotta show. Gotta be careful. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and then, you know, we did one of my favorite things that I did with Corbin was we had a, a battle royal where um, we were both doing well. And then I went to fake eliminate him as a prank. I gotcha. And then he went and actually eliminated <laughs> me. And I was upset for a second. But then I, you, you are good. <laughs> and, and I took that opportunity to Robert. Um, is it analyze that the De Niro movie where you you are good you and I, and, and I just thought to myself like I'm on national TV in you know in a dream job of mine you know like if I was a kid and I could tell you that I was going to be a WWE superstar like I would be so amazed and then I'm also doing this Robert De Niro impression that's like an inside joke with me <laughs> but it fits the character it works it was just like it was a lot of fun I could do stuff like that and it just made it even easier to commit to. It's also just great because there's millions of people watching, but you're, Pierce, did you watch? Did you see it? Did you see it in the face? <laughs> you never know, like, and this is another thing that I find and I just love so much about, about WWE and sports entertainment in general is that you can't predict, pinpoint, decide the moments that have the potential to just change everything. Like, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, when you took that fall and like there was this moment that I think all of us that have been watching for any amount of time can see that happen and go oh no 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 and then watch kind of a scramble happen right where uh, I think we're gonna change plans and then 45 seconds later nope I'm good I'm back and that's one of those like you don't think oh if I take this horribly I might get all the fans to support me and I feel like that's kind of what happened with Madcap in a way that, that instantly the fact that you were okay and wanted to continue the match, this whole sea of fans were like, oh, he's the, he's the real deal. Was that a scary moment? That was the match with Drew McIntyre, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I get conflicted on this because in a sense there's this, there's this part of me that's very proud of going on in that and – and toughen it out, but like at the same time, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, paint the the picture that it's good to push through concussions if you do have one or so a serious injury. Like if it is serious, like you got to stop. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know if if I had known how bad it looked, maybe it's different. Like I knew it didn't go properly. Mm -hmm. Obviously, <laughs> you could probably um, feel that, like, oh, it didn't that was go. the top of my head. <laughs> that wasn't right. Um, <laughs> But then I, I didn't really, like, I immediately, I was totally with it, and Jess, the ref, came over and said, are you good? And I said, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just, let's, let's just keep going, you know. Are you sure? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, we went outside the ring, and, you know, like you said, just 45 seconds later, Drew's throwing me over the table. I think he might have overhead me, threw me over the table. And I heard Corey Graves say, I don't even know how Madcap is walking right now. And I was like, hmm. Maybe. Maybe it was a little worse than I thought. But still, I got back to the backstage and the doctors and the producers saying, look, look, let's go look at it. Like, are you sure you're okay? And I'm just like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. But they brought me up to Gorilla and I, in high definition, super slow motion, frame by frame, they showed me the replay and I saw my neck just like crunch. Oh. And I was just like, well, let's go look at that because that does not look good right there. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, I escaped with just a sore neck for a, a few days. Wow. But, um, you know, I, I do, you know, I pride myself on being prepared physically and mentally. And, you know, I like to think I'm, I'm, I have some level of toughness to, to keep going. But like I said, I'm, it's a bit conflicting, you know. Like, of course, I, I love toughness. I admire toughness in others and c continuing to push through pain. But I wouldn't want to you know, tell people to push through serious injury and, and put themselves at further risk. Right. I think the key to that story is that, I mean, like, I, for one, and I think I speak for others, would be too terrified <laughs> to continue, right? Regardless, if there's an injury, you stop. But the fact that you were like, nope, I'm good. Let's keep going. <laughs> like, I, like that's, that's, that's the moment. Um, was there any part of you after that that was like, 
man, I can't have people running around thinking that I'm like really tough or admirable in any way. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a villain. Yes. Um, you know, then, and yeah, there was part of me that wanted to, you know, kind of tweet that night and play it up. Like, yeah, you damn right. I did that. Sure. But, but you know, we're in this, this feud with Drew McIntyre, who is he, that's him. That's his character. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And, uh, I'm a clown in suspenders, <laughs> you know, like I can't be the tough clown in suspenders. <laughs> Not yet, at least, you know? And, uh, so, um, we had to be careful and it, it, not too careful because it's easy with Drew. Drew's so good in his own right that, you know, he could easily overcome any bit of respect that Madcap gained. But <laughs> I think I think we played it right the next week where um, we kind of shifted the heat towards Corbin yeah. where he was supposed to have a match with Drew and then he was like, nah, Madcap, you got it. You're fine. I'm like that, that neck's okay. And it's like, geez, what a dick. He's yeah. <laughs> thrown his friend of the wolves. Um, so it, it, it is something you think about and yeah. you, you just got to be careful about and try to, you know, you hate when stuff like that happens, but when it happens, try to use it. Right. If it makes sense, but you just got to use it in a way that does make sense. Were you worried at all? I mean, as, as, as kind of ridiculous as Madcap was, when it's time for Madcap to go away, were you like, Ugh, I don't like, were you ready for it to go? Or were you like, I, I, I'd like to keep going. Yeah. I, you know, and I think it can go both ways. Like when I first it conflicted, I would say, because sure. when I first heard the name Madcap, I, there was definitely part of me that thought like, well, the main event of WrestleMania is not in the picture anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then, you know, like, uh, and, and there was a lot of people who'd come up to me and be like, you know, like, just keep going. Like, don't worry, we'll get out of the suspenders. And I'd be like, should we, though? Because, like, <laughs> you know, like, anyone can wear wrestling trunks, but, like, that guy in the third row is dressing up like Madcap because yeah. he can. What like, if, he's got suspenders on right now. If instead know? of taking me out of them, we started selling suspenders? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, like, Riddick is a cool name. I like Riddick. I chose it. Um, but there's Riddick Bo. There's the movies Riddick. Like, you don't really hear Madcap these <laughs> no. days very much. <laughs> Which and, is, like, uh, that's great, like, People don't even know what madcap means. Right. Like, it's exactly. not part of the vernacular anymore. Yeah. And it's like, it's easy to say once you, you know, some people think you're saying mad cat at first, but yeah. once you get past <laughs> that, like, so I was a bit conflicted on it. And I, even like just going away from the suspenders or even turning babyface, like, I was, I was not convinced because, you know, in NXT, I'd always worked heel on the main roster, I'd always worked heel. And like, I won the Andre. That the week before, you know, at the WrestleMania weekend, and like they were not happy about that. And, uh, you know, I gave a speech and they just booed it the whole time. And then the next week, Corbin was going to turn on me and we were going to turn Madcap Babyface. And I was just like, man, I think there's like a 50 50 chance they just cheer Corbin, which I should have known better because Corbin's so good as a I heel. mean, it takes a lot. Like, yeah, exactly. it takes a lot to get people to cheer Baron Corbin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I also give, so I give Corbin a lot of credit, but I also give. Vince had a few key points in that segment that he just thought were important for us to hit that would help the crowd understand what we were going for. And when we were out there, before we even started the turn, they were chanting Madcap Moss. And I was like, wow, are you serious? Like, I just couldn't believe it. And so uh, it worked really well. And like, again, credit to Corbin and Vince for that. It's amazing when those little, like, things that you just, it doesn't occur to you. It's like, yeah, do this a little like that instead of like that. And it's, that's, that's the thing. Yep. It's unbelievable. And I think it's another thing that's kind of unique to, to wrestling. How did you get so fast? <laughs> I mean, the, the speed at which you move. Because I, I would think that that's maybe a benefit to being a, a good guy is that as a villain, you can't be that impressive, right? Like, right. you can't do things that people want to cheer just because they look cool because you don't want people to cheer. Right. Right? So, like, yep. once, you're, once you're able to go at, like, full speed because people see you and you look like you know you look like an action figure you look like a pro wrestler but then you move like a cruiserweight and people are like i've never that's the thing i think that people have never really seen like that before yeah i mean it's it's little things like that that can that can help you stand out and i do sometimes see comments and and tweets like you know just how he hits the ropes is impressive and there's been people backstage that have told me that and like i just think there's a i mean i train very hard to be strong and fast but I, I think part of it is just like you got to just commit to running as fast as you can into the ropes. And if they ever break, I'm not 
going to be good. <laughs> it, it's not going to go well. But hopefully, hopefully they, they, they won't break. Yeah, hopefully they don't break during my career. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think the thing is, you know, as far as making sure that you're then booed if you need to be booed is – and I'm not doing like ricochet stuff. Like, let's be clear. Right. Like, I'm just running fast straight ahead. <laughs> it's just it's very not fast. Quite the same. <laughs> but it's just you just have to have a little bit of like they can think it's impressive, but it's kind of got to be like, ooh, like that was nasty. Like that guy's a dick. <laughs> right. Didn't have, right. To, didn't have to hit him that hard. You know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's something that I definitely enjoy. Like, I think I can I I bring to the table that not everyone else can. Do you have a favorite? Uh, SummerSlam memory growing up, or for you, was it Bash at the Beach? It was more, <laughs> it was more Bash at the Beach. Um, man, uh, so, I mean, there's so many great SummerSlam matches. I mean, the, the ones, honestly, when I think about stuff like, you know, Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, uh, and uh. that was, I didn't watch it when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I was, I was at 93, 92, 91, 91. 91. Okay, yeah. so I was two years old, but, um, but you're going aging, back and watching, you're, you're aging. Some of us that did watch yeah. it as a kid. Yeah. Uh. I'm sorry, I'm just, but there, I mean, and then there's more recent ones as well. I mean, dude, last year's Brock and Roman match oh. was like so good. I just, I mean, it was edge of the seat stuff. Um, so yeah, I, there's. It's hard to pick out one, um, but yeah, like I said, some of the ones that I think about the most are like ones that I didn't watch as a kid, but I've gone back and watched now are just like classics. And what about going forward? Are you the type that's like? Uh, racking your brain, going like, what do I got to come up with next? What's going to be the next thing? Or is it what you said before? I'm just going to, you know, have fun doing this and see where it goes. People know what I can do. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a little bit of both. I think the dance is uh, doing everything that you can in your abilities to, to get to where you want to go, but not try to control the things that you can't control. Yes. And that's a, that's a tough dance to pull off because they bleed into each other. And so, I mean, I think for me, I do think a lot about what can I do to just what is the show missing? What can I where can I fit in? What can I do to kind of take that next step? Because I do want to be a part of things. You know, that's the thing. Everyone wants to contribute. And like I said, just have something to be able to dive into and, and give your all to. Um, so I do think about that. But when it does come up, I don't really think about and, and that this is actually something that that John Cena has told a group of us is like he never tried to you know, alter giant storylines. He took what they gave him and said, how can I make this the best it could possibly be? And that's kind of my mindset as well. I respect you so much more for saying John Cena told a group of us because there are so many people in your position that would go, uh, John Cena told me that... Uh... <laughs> Johnny C, <laughs> yeah. my, my boy Johnny C <laughs> pulled me aside. <laughs> well, I think I speak for all of us when I say I appreciate so much you taking the time out of your schedule and coming on, telling us some stories. Riddick Moss, everybody. I appreciate it, man. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always worried watching a guy like that like walk off stage, right? Because it's like he's just talking about all the amazing physical feats that he's accomplished. And I'm like, he's going to trip on my damn stage, and, and this is going to be it. This is going to be the work. Wow. Um, so I know that, you know, obviously we have a lot of uh, uh, Not Sam Wrestling uh, uh, fans, right, in here. But, you know, we don't, we don't take up all the hours in the day with Not Sam Wrestling content, just a lot of them. Uh, do we listen to other uh, uh, wrestling podcast content creators, radio shows? Are we fans? <laughs> It was more of a yes or no, but uh, <laughs> well then, why don't, we, uh, why don't we turn this into a super pod, huh? Why don't we bring together some of the most powerful forces in the world of wrestling content creation. First, you know him from his YouTube channel where he's done some of the best interviews with some of the biggest superstars that the industry has ever seen. He gives us uh, pearls of wisdom every week on his podcast, Insight, and he is Canadian. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Van Vliet. What's up, man? See, you're built... 
Okay. Give me a hug. You're built for this, like, uh, performance stuff. Like, you come out and you're, like, playing up and showing off and you got muscles on your T-shirt and everything. Is this why you're wearing a jacket with I mean, sleeves? literally, it's like my logo's on there. You announce my name. I come out all sheepishly. Hi, guys. No, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, you, <laughs> as soon as you said Canadian, I'm like, I got to do the Bret Hart, right? <laughs> well, you did. You, you got to do that. Well. I also feel like I see the shirt there. Like, yeah, it's just become the new thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's become the new what? Yeah. Do we think he's going to win the Slim Jim Battle Royale? Get a ton of Slim Jims. By the way. Oh, dude. Help yourself, Chris. I am, I am. What do we want? Do we want a, a, a Ruthless Raspberry? Or a Berry Power Bomb? Have you, I mean, look. Help yourself. Get the energy I'm up. Actually Ultimate drink, energy. I'm going to drink one of these right now. You should. They're for you. Could you imagine I'm how not, fast I talk if I drink yeah, all three of these right I now? mean, they're not here for decoration. Come on. We also... <laughs> yeah, give it up one time for C4, baby. Uh, cheers. 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 It's delicious. Oh, you guys are all drinking them too. This of is course, great. Of course, of course. We're a C4. Woo! Uh, let's, let's add to the party. I mean, two do not make a super pod. You need three for a super pod. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, six days a week is not enough for a radio <laughs> show that I believe should be 24 7 on Sirius XM. Ladies and gentlemen, the host and the creator of the busted open brand, Dave LaGrica. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. Dave. laughs> <laughs> By the way, did, did you listen to Dave and I uh, all weekend hosting Busted Open, interviewing the superstars? Very nice. Very nice. Oh. Dave, we have a C4 for you. Oh, thank you very much. There you go. Which... Am I coming off like a sh Cody show by wearing this? No, 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 no. You're just an unbiased okay. professional. By, no, you, you, know what, you know what makes you a Cody show? It's not that you're wearing that jacket. It's that he bought it full price at the store. I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. It looks good. It's though. nice that you dressed up for it this. It looks good. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, sweat shorts. Yeah, that's the you most know. offensive thing. I like the jacket. The shorts I find egregious. <laughs> and this is, and I would love to get the opinion of every one of you because I mm. find you extremely intelligent and I love each and every one of you. That's a wow. That's I mean, 100% oh, wow. true. A true baby face here. So I saw Sam yesterday at the press junket. Right? Well, it was the press junket for them. It was the show for us. Yes. Yeah. And Sam looked very good. Button-down oh, shirt, button-down shirt, <laughs> slacks, <laughs> shoes. I show up with a T-shirt, shorts, and my boat shoes. And he was like, are you serious? This is the way that you come to a professional event I dressed mean, like that? And I say, yeah. <laughs> That's the way that I dress. It's There's really now, the boat shoes for me. They're you great. You don't like the boat shoes? No, I love them. They're oh, horrible. I was going to say, because if you don't like them, I'll take them off. <laughs> no, that'd be worse. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, you don't want it because you'd be on wiki feet. We got to pay extra for that. We got to pay extra. Yeah, that's, uh, no, I just, there is something that I respect about somebody that like started from nothing, right? Busted open was just your idea. Yes. And then you create this thing that's become the most powerful wrestling radio show in the world. Thank you. And you're still... Yeah. Wearing your dumb shorts and boat shoes. It's like you have <laughs> Well, I still suffer from lack of funza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rare Italian disease. Yeah. And anybody that listens to Busted Open knows there's a lot of walking, talking zombies that walk the hallways of Sirius XM. Oh, so, I know. Oh, you know, no, I know. anybody. But, I know. Uh, no, I'm extremely thankful for the platform and, of course, everybody that showed up here today. So oh, well, yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, he's a true baby face. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. It's all he's got. Uh, I feel like you that's need to. Oh God, because I know I'm talent. <laughs> I feel like I need to turn heel here. Like, I don't think you got it in you, Chris. I don't think. Uh, you know what I don't like, like about Detroit? <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's. Uh, he can't go. It's he, cold in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> boo, boo. Yeah. Boo. Uh, a, I have more wins than your local sports team does. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. I like to end every heel promo by asking you the three things you're grateful for. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mixed messaging. Well, look, I mean, we were, I was talking uh, 
to the great Riddick Moss. By the way, how great was he? Awesome. So good, yeah. So Give good. it up one more time for Riddick Moss. Yeah. But I was talking to him about SummerSlam memories, and he brought up, you know, your fellow Canuck there, Bret Hart. Of course. Um, and uh, something that I've been uh, uh, going through my brain, and it goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of the show, in, in that, like, you know, we tend to look at wrestling nostalgically, mm. but it's moving forward at just as rapid a pace, I think, as either any of us have ever seen. Uh, forever, when you'd ask the question, who's Mr. SummerSlam? Like, who's the guy at SummerSlam? I think Brett was the answer, right? It because was. For me, it's like, and you can even watch the the, the career of, of, of Brett and how it grows by his SummerSlam matches, right? You have SummerSlam 90, where it's the Hart Foundation and Demolition. Bret Hart is just uh, killing it as a tag team wrestler. 91, Brett versus Mr. Perfect. And it's, it's, to me, redefining what a WWE match was at the time. 92, he takes the Intercontinental title to Wembley and he main events with it. Yeah. 93, a lot of people pretend like they can skip past 93. And I understand the Jerry Lawler thing. It was like, uh, it was a little gimmicky. But if you actually watch Brett the Hitman Hart versus Doink the Clown <laughs> from SummerSlam 1993, it is fantastic as a match. And people's going to go like, yeah, 90, 91, 92, 94. I go, no, 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 no. You don't take that away from Doink the Clown. <laughs> One of the underrated, and then of course 94, you know, bring the world title to the steel cage. But realistically, other people now, as much as we want to say, well, the stuff we watched is, when we were kids is the best, other people now, you could argue, have had just as impressive, if not more impressive, runs at SummerSlam. Mm. So my question to you guys is, do you, have you rethought, who do you think Mr. SummerSlam is? I feel like the argument now is, has to be made for Brock Lesnar. Yep. And you look at the run that he's been on, one person clapping for Brock <laughs> Lesnar. <laughs> yeah! By the way, by the way, and that speaks to Brock Lesnar, right? Because if this were a good guy, Brock Lesnar, yeah. and he was still wearing a cowboy hat and smiling, everyone would, would yeah! It's, look, but I, he's a bad guy now, yeah. and even like all of us, the most jaded fans who have been watching forever, I'm not cheering that guy. <laughs> he's bad. I, and I think that the case can be made for Brock Lesnar because, yeah, obviously what he's done the last many years at SummerSlam, but this began at SummerSlam 2002 against The Rock, becomes the youngest ever world champion. Now we're getting the claps. Yeah. And that match, when you go back and watch it, you realize, oh my gosh, we knew Brock Lesnar was good, but that match is technically, like, I, I think that's technically one of the best uh, matches The Rock's ever had. Well, you go, like, you have that moment, you have Brock versus Rock, who, like, People wanted Brock to win. That's a big deal, right? Yeah. I mean, Matt Camp was talking, uh, Riddick was talking about a minute ago how, like, you know, you got to be careful when you're the good guy or the bad guy. Rock wanting to be a villain, that's tough to do. Like, it's tough to find people that you'll cheer for instead of The Rock. And the fact that, like, people actually wanted Brock to win that match, that doesn't really happen often for The Rock. But so, yeah, you've got the 2002 match. You've got, of course, the Randy Orton match. You've got the John Cena match which is like yeah. right up there with yeah. beating the streak. Like that's literally where Suplex City was invented. Yeah. And, and I mean, the, the Roman match, the last the, man standing the match. The tractor last year. Oh. Like, that's an all time moment. That's something we're gonna be talking about years from now. But I wanna go back to something you said when you talked about Brock in the beginning and the fact that the reaction from everybody here with the booze, how great is it right now in 2023? People are buying in oh. to the characters it's and the, the personalities. Best. like. You're booing who you're supposed to boo, and you're cheering who you're supposed to cheer. When have you been able to say that, really, in the last 10 to 15 years? Not but it's happening no right now in the WWE, which I think is a great thing. We're buying yes. in as fans, yeah. and I think that's awesome. And, Chris, I agree with you about Brock. When you look at the matches and you look at the moments, you mentioned Randy Orton, the elbow mm. to Randy's head in Brooklyn at SummerSlam. Like, I really do feel it's Brock Lesnar right now. Yeah. And Brock is Teflon. Brock could go out there tonight and lose, which he's been doing a lot of. More, lately, well, which, more, more often yeah, than Yeah, more used often to. than, yeah. yeah. And it feels uh, like he's going to lose tonight. Do you guys think, is Cody Rhodes going to win tonight? Yeah. No, no, no. Is Cody Rhodes going to lose tonight? 
<laughs> That's not the right question. Is Brock Lesnar going to win tonight? No. Mine was better. Yeah, what you're saying. <laughs> um, but you're right. I mean, Brock is a solid argument, but I'm also thinking, right, what's the – it's not just the greatest storyline that's happening right now. You, arguably the greatest storyline of all time. It's certainly a top five or top ten. The yeah. bloodline, right? Yeah. The best in the, at least the last 30 years. Yes, yes. But I don't that, think that's that then, arguable. That then includes the Attitude Era, right? It's so easy to go, one of the best storylines of the last 20 years. Like, easy to say that. When you start to go, one of the best storylines of the last 25 or 30 years, you go, well, uh, we got... I don't like, think there's any story in the Attitude Era that was... Austin just, McMahon? Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's not one single story, right? That's a, and, and also, you know, I they took a couple of missteps sure. with Austin McMahon. Yeah. Austin, Austin yeah. turning heel, yeah, right. Rikishi running over Stone Cold. <laughs> he did it like, for The Rock. We, we, we got a little messy, a little muddled <laughs> right, well, with Austin So McMahon. let me ask you this, and I'll ask both of you, Sam and Chris, like, the WWE, a lot of times when we watch the WWE, we're like, uh, you know, are they going to get this right or are they going to get this right? They have done nothing wrong in this story for almost three years. What a shill. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, Sam, I'm an AEW show. Oh, I forgot. I, I got it all mixed show. up. You're a WWE show. You're 100%. <laughs> you're, you're right. First of all, you're 100% right about that. And you're 100% right about what you said about the bloodline. Even in moments where us fans that know better made the wrong move. They've made the wrong move like six times this year already, and yeah. it's always the right move. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to jump off of what you were saying earlier about, like, it's so easy with nostalgia to go back to the 90s or go back to the Attitude Era and go, oh, man, it was so good back when. I want you guys to realize that we are living in those great times yep. right now. Okay. Whether you're... It's so true. Whether you're an AEW fan with them selling 77,000 plus tickets at Wembley, whether you're going to SummerSlam tonight, 50,000 people there. Wrestling is booming right now, and I just want you to realize that we're going to be talking about this stuff 20 years and from now. And don't forget about the women's match on AEW at 9.22 p.m. <laughs> each and every Wednesday. <laughs> Let's not forget that. <laughs> They're always good. <laughs> when, they, when they cut to that sign, it was like, oh, they know. <laughs> they know. Let's not only they cut know. to the sign, but let's do a close-up <laughs> on the sign yeah. as well. It was that is not enough. a mistake. Do you want us to move to a different camera? No. Nope. <laughs> Take camera seven. No. Take it now. Well, okay, so when we talk about the bloodline and the story, right, like SummerSlam are arguably, even with WrestleMania considered, the defining chapters of the bloodline story. That's going back to the beginning, right? SummerSlam 2020, mm. Roman returns out of nowhere, lays out Braun Strowman and The Fiend, yeah. and it results in him getting the title match a week later. And that was 2020, and we're still, we're still in that title reign yep. today. You go to 2021, and that was John Cena. 2022, and that's the definitive end of the Brock Lesnar War. 2023... We've now finally got the, the Jey Uso-Roman Reigns match, which I think is even more important because the bloodline has gotten us to a place where Jey Uso is the main event of a stadium show. That's an amazing thing. Jey deserves to be there, but the right story has to be told to, to pull him out of the Usos and make him the not only the main event, but the main event where half you guys in here just a minute ago said you wanted him to win. It's an amazing, mm. that's an amazing, amazing thing. But I would argue that, that if the bloodline is as important as I keep saying it is, and you keep saying it is, that maybe Roman is disrupting and taking the mantle of Mr. SummerSlam. It's possible. I mean, as you're explaining that, Sam, I keep thinking, and I'm a big Cody fan, that Cody's time was WrestleMania 39. I went on an epic rant on the Monday after WrestleMania when he lost. <laughs> and everybody explained to me, he's going to get bigger. He's going to get more sympathy. He's going to get a bigger, stronger fan base, which has happened since the loss. So somebody, now on thinking, somebody on this stage said that. Who was that? Yeah, Chris, I agree. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was Chris. Oh, it was Chris. <laughs> no, it was me. No, yeah. It was me. I told you that. Now, now I look to <laughs> Philadelphia and WrestleMania 40. But what's more important to the WWE? Cody becoming that champion or this historic <laughs> reign of Roman Reigns getting longer and passing a Hogan, possibly well, passing a Bob Backlund. I mean, what's more important 
to the I, WWE. I feel like that's what the... That's, oh, yeah, and that's the argument, right? And it's so amazing. But right now they're on different shows. And that's going to be very interesting to see what happens when you've got Cody on Raw and Roman on SmackDown. I, if we're going way ahead here, it's August right now as we sit here. I think Roman goes into WrestleMania 40 in Philly as the champion. I don't think he walks out as a champion. I don't know who, who takes it. Who does? Are you going to play this back when I'm right? Just I don't think you'll be Say right. It. Don't play it back when I'm right. It's, it's going to be, it's gonna be your, guy, your guy. It's going to be your guy, Cody, Cody yeah. Rhodes. I mean, I, I still yeah. know how they're going to get there with them being on different shows and everything right but, now. But think about this, right? They've spent three years building Roman Reigns as uh, indestructible. This is the same thing that happened with Goldberg, right? And the problem with doing stuff like this is you, it's just an impossible story. There's no, you, can't, you can't land it because you can't build up people that are credible enough opponents. And we're three years in. Yeah. And it feels like it can just keep going and going. Like yeah. the bloodline is the ultimate. Like, well, what if <laughs> Wait, Roman just kept winning? But, what if it, if? but if it's not Jay, and it's not Cody, and you're thinking, well, who else could it? Be? It could be Jimmy. It, it could be Solo. It could, it could have been be Sammy. Like, and then I, I kind of feel bad. You guys with me? I kind of feel bad for Sammy. Like, there was all that build up. It could be him in Montreal, and then he doesn't win. And it's like, well, all right now, you can give him the tag titles. Well, I mean, yeah, give them the tag titles in the main event of WrestleMania. I don't feel Hell too of a match. bad. <laughs> Hell of a match. But what happened to the, what happened to, you know, he was so close to beating Roman. Well, I. I no I, more title shots? I also, <laughs> I don't want to keep watching Sami Zayn lose to Roman Reigns. If, I, if Roman Reigns is the champion, the last thing you want is like, can I get a lot of title shots? Yeah, if you want, but guess who's going to keep winning? We ain't doing anything, so you can have as many as you want. <laughs> yeah. What about Seth Rollins? As a SummerSlam MVP, -er. Seth Rollins. Yes. Did you know this? Seth Rollins is a Triple Crown winner at SummerSlam alone. When you go through That's the incredible. iconic SummerSlam moment, Seth Rollins in the white attire. Seth Rollins was in that Universal, the 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 inaugural Universal Championship match at SummerSlam. I mean, Seth Rollins is is, I think, certainly coupled with the show, right? Absolutely, and I think that. Uh that's going to be one of those matches tonight that everybody's going to have their eyes on. Because that, yes. that's one of those matches you really don't know which way this could go here it's tonight. It's got to be Finn. Finn has to. You would to, think so. Finn has to win this championship tonight. Because here's why, Chris, and, and Sam, you and I talked about it on Busted Open today. Think about the story if Finn's the champion. Think about Monday Night Raw, this, this upcoming Monday, where you see... Dom with that North American championship, Rhea with that women's championship, Finn with the World Heavyweight Championship, and Damian Priest with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Mm. That's a great visual. And then you're wondering, is Damian Priest going to screw Finn Balor over for that World Heavyweight Championship? That's storytelling right yeah. there. Yeah, that's storytelling. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things that you could carry out. It's not like, is Damian Priest going to screw Finn Balor is something that we need to know within the next month. Like that's something that you could je that, that just always exists. Yeah. It's always like kind of lingering. And you know, hot take. All right, hot I take. I love hot, hot take, takes. Hot take. I feel like we all have to pause and listen. I'm not a hater. All right, so don't take my words that that's way. Not, uh oh. But I gotta tell you, can I curse? No. I've, has anybody ever said no? Like people, <laughs> can I curse? You never hear somebody go. Well, no, you absolutely no, no. can't curse. So no, Dave, you I can't. Will, I, will, I will not curse. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I'm getting a little sick of Seth's song, all right? What? I, I'm getting a little sick. I'm getting a little How sick. How dare you? Wait, 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 wait. He just song. turned I, heel. I, hey, he just I'm turned heel. I'm being honest. I'm always going to be oh. honest. What's wrong That's with it. his song? It's just, all right, okay, again, another hot take. Another hot take. Another don't one. kill me. Wait, wait, wait. Another don't one. kill me. Wait, wait, wait. Honest. Well, it's just my honest well, because, because Alice Cooper doesn't sing it. Is there any problem? <laughs> well, maybe if he did, maybe I'd like it more. Exactly. School's out for summer. <laughs> you told me not to curse, so don't say that. All right, <laughs> All right um, Dave, you can curse. You've earned it. Here's the thing. When it comes to Seth, who's Seth Rollins? What's the story his, with Seth first Rollins? First of all, his okay. name what, is first Seth of all, freaking Rollins, yeah. okay? Yeah. That's all I got. If you got steamer clapping for you, you are a hater, by the way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, 
Listen, bro, who can I'm pull not saying, You kidding me? He brought the big red boots to Monday Night Raw. Oh, this relevancy. Yeah, yeah. The I relevancy listen, of the I'm big red Listen, I'm busted open. I said this. And listen, I'm, I love Seth Rollins. I think Seth Rollins. Oh, yeah, Rollins, sounds like it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I think Seth Rollins is one of the best pro wrestlers that there is. But. but I opened it up on Busted Open. I said, listen, I don't understand the character. I don't understand the story. Explain it to me. I'm, I'm ignorant here, so explain to me. He's a visionary. Yeah. Explain to me why I should love Seth Rollins. And everybody, hold on, hold on, sir. <laughs> everybody that oh. called in, you know what the first thing they said? His song is fun. All right, I get the song is fucking fun, but what's the story here? Sorry, yeah, right. Sam. I mean, Sam, the song Sam. is pretty fun. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who cares that the song is fun, says the guy that stole the Undisputed Era's theme song for his radio show. <laughs> By the way, Cody's, Cody's entrance theme, much better than oh, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Much yeah. better than Boo. Sam. Oh. Much better. I, I would like to point out, and maybe you guys have heard me say this before, it took six years for the whoa to get over in Cody's song. Six years! What's going on here, people? I don't understand that. Well, he's wrestling that. for a secondary promotion. Well, but, oh. well, that's the thing. <laughs> I can't. He had this that is. song in the indies. He had a New Japan. He had an AEW. <laughs> Nobody seemed to care. And then for three years, Cody would finish with an AEW match, walk in the back and be like, I don't understand why they're not saying whoa. Yeah, you know like, I don't I don't get it. You know why? I don't get it. You know why they arms out. You know why they weren't saying whoa? Yeah. Because they were too busy going boo. <laughs> First night in WWE. Whoa. There you go. I'm home. What are you so revved up? You know what? Wow, if geez. it's my fault for getting so much C4 in here. Yeah. Dave is a, Dave, He hasn't even cracked it open. Cracked it open. Dave I got a of ultimate thing, energy. So I can have some hot takes. Wow. Right, who's drinking? Come on. Who's drinking? Let's go. Come on. Who's drinking? C4. Could I, could I shotgun no one of these? Daddy yes. soda shotgun a C4 right now. Daddy soda. You got one for me? Okay. All right. All right. Listen, you got, Dave, you got you're out of control. You're out of control, Dave. Listen, I can't believe somebody with such bad takes has such a successful show. Thank God for Mark Henry and Bully Ray, huh? Thank God for Mark Henry and Bully Ray. What's, what do you and guys... Tommy. And oh, Tommy Dreamer geez. and Mickey James and Thunder There's Rosa. I mean, There's you talk about people. adding set decoration to a turd. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Sam. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, so what are you? What are you guys most excited to see tonight at the big show? You know what? Besides Cody and Brock, because that's the obvious one, because I'm such a big Cody fan. Oh. It really is. Are you it, a big Cody fan because of his song? I know you're a big song guy. It's the whoa. It's the whoa. It's the whoa. Now that's a fun it's song. The, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, Chris, that was a really good, that was a good zinger right there. Uh, um, you know what? It really is Jay and Roman. And it's not so much about the match. I really want to see what the aftermath mm. of this match is going to be. Like, if Jay loses, he's going to have to answer to the elders. And... How is that going to take place? What's going to take place? So, yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of matches with a lot of great stories connected to tonight's summer. I would argue all of them. Yeah, I think yeah. the card, top to bottom, it, like there's not a single match that you're not going to be paying attention to. The match that I can't wait to see, the match that's going to steal the show, is going to be Ricochet versus Logan Paul. And... And Logan Paul has kind of become like the Shane McMahon of matches. Like... Whether he wins or not, he has these moments that you will oh, talk very about. Controversial. Am I turning heel now? Uh huh. People didn't like that. You know, no, you know they what? didn't. He's Jeez. being honest. Let uh, the but man think about it. <laughs> what are you, his manager? <laughs> 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 he has these moments that whether he wins the match or not, you go, oh man, that elbow off the top or that splash off the top rope. Man, the, the Royal Rumble with Ricochet. Like he's having these moments where you're going, we're going into a Logan Paul match. What's he gonna do this time? You're 100 percent right, do? but it's begrudgingly. That's that's my favorite part of it. That like you go in, and you're like, man, that guy shouldn't even be here. All right, that was kind of cool, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> like every time it's like because it's undeniable, right? Like it the is. stuff he's doing. And Ricochet is so 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 talented. Yes. And I love that he's getting a chance to really shine and really show us what he's capable of with these long promos. And I mean, I think they're gonna steal the show. So that's the match that I'm most excited to see, but. I'm very excited to see what happens in this main event. I, I, I have a Which feeling. One? 
Four main There's events. Four main events, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> there can't be four main events. <laughs> You're talking about women's triple threat? Of course, yes. Yeah. That was the match <laughs> the I was talking event. about. I, I, I just don't see a situation. I see a lot of two and three quarters, but I don't see a situation where Roman Reigns isn't the champion after tonight. Oh, and the tribal chief. Like when you did the thing earlier of like who thinks Jim uh, Jay's gonna win and everyone cheered, but no, it's no, no. Like, or I you, think I think people <laughs> didn't cheer so much when I said who thinks. Yeah. Watch this. Who wants Jay Uso to win? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Watch this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who thinks Jay Uso is gonna win? <laughs> <laughs> well, have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Wrestling's awesome, isn't it? It's the best, <laughs> isn't it? But you know what the beauty of it is. That like you were saying, Dave, everybody's so on the ride and everybody's so on board that regardless of like, I really don't think he's going to win, but I really want him to win. Yeah. We want him to win enough that we will all be cheering Jey Uso and booing Roman Reigns. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what, it. That's what it's all about. What's the match for you? Man. Uh, like you said, I mean, for you know, I'm a bloodline guy. I just love, love seeing that story evolve but i am really hoping with the women's triple threat i think there's like a, a lot of moving parts in there first of all i think that they're going to like really show up because the women's division is so competitive right now like there's so much star power in it that i think charlotte and bianca and oscar all want to remind people you know we're still at the top of the division which is great for fans like to, to have that context to watch in but i also think it's like all three need to redefine themselves and i think Triple threat scenarios allow that to happen more mm. so than just about anything. Do you think match. the match will be at 9:22 tonight? Don't you <laughs> so? Just, just, uh, just asking. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what time it'll be on. <laughs> I like that we all pick three different matches. Yeah, I mean, but it goes to your point. Every single match has a story. I'll be there, people. Hold on, I need to interrupt you there. No, 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 because I know what you're gonna say. No, you don't. Slim Jim. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Does the winner of <laughs> no, no, the no. winner of the because Battle Royal? Get I'm, Slim Jims for life? Of course. The winner of the Battle Royal gets a ton of Slim Jims. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that's it, right? Yeah. Here's, here's the thing. There are a lot of people, including yeah. that guy right there in the yellow shirt, that guy screaming a single word. They're all, it sounds like a rock promo right here. Listen. That guy wearing the funny hat over there. <laughs> Remember we used to do that? There are a lot of people who I'll bet the Slim Jim Battle Royal is the thing that they're looking forward to most because they're hoping... L.A. Knight gets that moment, that he gets that victory, that there's a stadium full of people that can cheer along. I don't know if it's going to happen, but they're that, hoping that now, because, you know, L.A. Knight has had so many, like, it could happen here, it could happen here, it could happen here, and I think, I think that's, like, right up to the brim right now. That is the story, but, like, in wrestling canon here, what does the winner of this match get? Pride! What do you get Pride? for winning any man? Pride? I beat 24 other dudes. A handshake and a Slim Jim? Look, there's 24 other guys in here. I beat all of them, and I won the Slim Jim Battle Royal. If I beat 24 dudes in a stadium, I'd walk around like I was the man. You know what we're missing from L.A. Knight, which we had in N.W.A. when he was Eli Drake? We what? need the talk to us, pro or the chant, remember? Talk to us, talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See? See? Hello. As he's bringing the mic to his face, yeah. the crowd will get quiet, mm -hmm. and then he'll, let me talk to you. Right, everybody will lose their minds. Look, so good. There's so much potential. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, incredible moments tonight, and that's, you know, part of, of, of what this thing is. I feel like we had some amazing moments here on this stage. I'd like to once again thank... C4 Ultimate Energy. Cheers. And their partnership with WWE. Cheers. The Ruthless Raspberry for, uh, for, for, for bringing us. Cheers. What do you got? What, what flavor you got there, Dave? What flavor you got there? I got Berry Power Bomb. I love it. I love it. I love. I was hoping it'd be pierogi flavored C4. No, but I know. Well, that's when case. Busted Open the gets case. the deal. Make Thank sure. you both for Thanks. being on the show tonight. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for letting us share this stage with you. Thank you, guys. Give it up for Sam Roberts, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody, thanks, everybody. Yeah.